fun getting to know each other and getting each other's signatures and finding out a little more about your, your neighbors. So who, who feels like they got a lot of signatures? Come on, anyone. Okay, who got more than three? Who got more than four? Five or more? Six or more? Seven or more signatures? Eight or more? Eight. All right, congratulations back there. <laughs> So you'll get an additional free drink at dinner time. So now we're going to be learning. We're going to look at a case study in in a proteomics experiment and talk about the tidyverse with Sun Hang. Okay, thank you, Terry. Hello, everyone. Um, so in the following 90 minutes, so I'm going to tell you briefly about the case study that we are go we are going to use. Is recording? Okay. Yeah. We are going to use in in the following section. And so I also talk about some uh, typical operation that we usually care about for uh, method-based proteomics experiment. So first, just for those of you who are not working in this area, so here's a high-level overview uh, of method-based proteomics experiment. So for relative uh, protein quantifications, usually we are uh, we concerned about the detection uh, of difference between different conditions. So for example, we, we may be interested in knowing which protein abundance they change between healthy and disease subject. However, uh, for, for, for button-up workflow, work protein are usually not directly measured or quantified. Instead, those proteins, they are clipped into peptide, which are charged fragments and measured by mass spectrometry. And those fragments of charged peptide, also called the species here, are the basic unit for the quantification. So for example, in, in this protein, you can see there are uh, six features uh, in different colors. And in, in some workflow, they involve the uh, labeling of the injected uh, uh, pep peptide, which gives us a, a pair of signal for uh, each peptide where we refer uh, heavy and the light uh, based, on, based on their mass difference. So for example, C13 and C12. And in the heavy channel, uh, ideally, the signal are supposed to, to be identical across runs. However, as you can see already, there are some run to run variation. And, and then still, if we, we are interested in quant quantify uh, protein abundance and use protein abundance as a subsequent analysis where we want to uh, detect their change, we need to make another step where we want to s summarize the feature intensity here. We have six value for one run into a one single value. All right, so in this case study, um, it's a study investigating the variability of plasma uh, proteins in, in the twin populations. And in this data set, there are uh, 232 uh, plasma samples got profiled by mass spec. There are uh, 80, uh, 58 pairs of uh, twins, 116 subjects in total, and whose, whose uh, plasma sample were acquired during the two visit time uh, of it, each subject. So in total, we have 232 uh, plasma sample. And the data were acquired uh, by DIA in their SRM. So in this case study, so what we are going to do, we will just use a subset of the original data set where we have uh, 32 proteins by DIA and the 39 by SRM. So here just to show some overview of the data, we load the data and we use this third function that tell, tells us, okay, this is a data frame. We have this number of observation and uh, nine variable. Let's look at uh, some of them quickly. So we have two data frame, one for DIA and one for SRM. We have nine column here. 
one for protein length, feature length. Feature here is a combination of the uh, peptide and also the fragment. We have the wrong ID from 001 all the way to 232, followed by a uh, few uh, few columns uh, for the sample annotation. And in, in the very end, we have two columns for the intensity, one for the uh, light channel and the other for the heavy channel. And as you can see already, in the, in the last two columns, actually we have some missing value. So in the subsequent test, we, we, we need to uh, take that into account when we do any type of operation on it. So as you all know, so the data frame contains variable in column and the observation in row in a tabular form. It's usually a pre preferable uh, format uh, for data analysis because number one, uh, data frame actually keep together those related value together in a row. And also most function in R for statistical modeling inference, actually they take the data frame as a primary primary input format that can be passed through this uh, data equal to an object argument. As always, once we load the data, so the very first thing we, we want to know will be the after we know the structure and also some of their dimensionality and the level of those categorical variable in vectors. Okay, so here let's talk about the text that we we are going to do for this case study. The first one we want to task one, we want to compute the the median value of log intensity for all the features coming from the heavy channel in each plot. So if I go back to this plot, so here we have one box plot that's showing essentially showing the the range or distribution of the log intensity of all the features in each run. As I mentioned, in, in the heavy channel, it's considered as a reference. So somehow, ideally, we want to make sure they are in, we, we don't get any systematic bias across run. So the, the first thing we want to do is to calculate the median, the median value of, log, of those log intensity. And the second task would be, we want to apply some adjustment, essentially shift those log intensity for all the features from the same run together for both heavy and the light channel in a way such that after the adjustment, the median of the log intensity in the heavy channel would stay, cons stay uh, the same across runs. So that would be the, the first two tasks. And the third task would be, okay, now we, we get the data normalized, then we want to, we want to summarize the feature intensity to the protein level. Essentially, if we go back to, to this profile plot, after we normalize the data and we want to summarize those value into the, those value of feature intensity into one single uh, value for the protein intensity. And in, in this case study, we'll just do something very simple. We'll just calculate the summation of those feature intensity and then take a log transformation. And after that, once we, once we summarize uh, the intensity for each protein in each run, we want to fit a linear model that characterizes the, the summarized intensity based on some predicted variable. In this case, we're just based on the logosity, whether the twin are uh, heterozygous or hom homozygous. And in the, end, in the end, we'll do a group comparison, just use a standard two, two sample t test. So I'm going to go through some uh, tool uh, that in, in base R for each of the tasks. And as, as you will see, actually, the, the R actually provide quite a few different ways to perform each type of task. Uh, one important thing to notice would be how those tools, they are grouped together to carry on uh, those tasks. And also, I also talk about some issue or limitations throughout the line. Okay, so here I'm loading, I'm loading the data set. And we're first primarily work, working with the DI data set. 
Oh, and by the way, in our studio, uh, you can, for some of you who is more familiar, I, I mean, to browse, browse your data set in, in this type of spreadsheet representation, so you can use the view function that would have the, the, this uh, view or browser pop out. Okay, text one. So text one, we want to calculate the, the median of log intensity from the heavy channel for each run. Yes? You, you mean the, this one? Yeah, so 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 here the R3, I, I just use the R3 to, to go through this. Yeah, but all the, yeah. Brandon, so if you open this R and D file, so all the all the R code will be inside this R trunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I maybe upload or update the repository later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To build the data set. Yeah, the view. Did you load the data set already? Yeah. Right, so you, you first need to load the data set, and then that would load those uh, DIA and SRN data frame. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right, so we are here, so we just look at the view. Okay. And then for for the first task. No, we cover that. Okay. Task one. Okay. We want to we want to compute the median of log intensity for each round. Okay, but before that 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 somehow simp simplified the test in, into a slightly sim uh, simpler version. So before we calculate the median for all the run, let's say, okay, now we, we just want to calculate the median of log intensity for one run. And that will involve some data manipulation and transformation. Okay, and so the most important thing here will be those two that help us to extract those existing variable that we can use this dollar sign or you by using column name or indices. And also, we want to be able to extract the existing observation. So for example, here we just want to extract the measurement from one single run, then how can we do that? And also, we need a tool to add new variable. For example, in the original data set, we only have the column variable for intensity, but here we are concerned about the log intensity, so how to do that? Let's, let's go through. Okay, I'll first call this the column name or function. That will tell, that will tell us the what's the column name in this data frame. So we know there are several columns, so from runs all the way to visit that we can use this for the sample annotation. So I'm going to select those columns and then use the unique function that give us the unique value for the for those uh, for those variable that we can use as the as a uh, data frame that uh, for, for, for the study design. So here we'll have a run and the for each run that give us the annotation for peer, Zagoski, uh, subject, and visit. Right, and um, we know already that in, in our intensity column there are some missing value. So when we, we can use, we can use this, the, uh, uh, we, we can use the, the logical operation uh, 
inside the uh, indices here and so to extract those column uh, to extract those, those row where the where the intensity is an, an A value and then we ne negate the, the operation so essentially to extract those values that do not have missing value here And then the, the next thing we want to do, now we want to we want to just filter ba based on the column of the intensity as well as the the run ID. At this level, we just want to extract the intensity from the very first run. So we'll just add the logical operation here, which is n operation. So that would extract those observation that do not have any missing value, and also they come from the very first run. As you can see, all of them, they are from the first round, and we don't have any missing value here. All right, and we talk about, uh, we, want to, we, we want to normalize based on the log intensity. So here, what we are doing is here is to extract the value from this column, from the intensity column, and then apply the log two transformation. And then we get we get the output. We want to assign this output to a new column here, where I call it log two input h. So that gives us two new variable columns. All right now. We know we know how to we know how to extract the variable. We know how to extract the observation, and we also know how to apply some operation on the vector we have. Now the next thing is to combine those multiple operations together. Here, we'll first to do the filtering, um, to do the filtering based on the wrong ID. We want to only extract the wrong. The, the, the feature from the very first round. And also we want to make sure those log two intensity they are not they don't have any an A value. So I just want to make sure that we're not talking about the same thing. Log two I I want to make sure that we're talking about log log two comparison to log two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so like you say, for for change, the log two would actually give a very good interpretation for the for change. Yeah, so that that would be the on, on the protein level. But somehow from the pro, from to reach to that protein level, we, we need to build those um, range intensity range from the very very bottom. From here, no. Yeah, that's the way I would do that. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I agree. So in terms of the intensity range, log 10 would be easier to interpret for sure. Yeah, but so. Yeah. Hmm? For change for what? Right, right, right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so maybe for method development and you, you, you want to make sure, I mean, they are really calibrated well and may, maybe log 10 would be okay. Yeah, but yeah, so since here, we, we actually, we are talking for the goal for uh, difference detection. So may, maybe log 2 is, is a good choice. Yeah, and a, a way to get it wrong would be probably I, I would say, okay, I always say, okay, 2 to the 10 would be around 1,000. So that, that will be some kind of a short, shortcut, maybe. Okay, so so here we talk about, okay, that would be the criteria that we want to build out or extract the observation uh, from the log two intensity. And then we can apply the median. That will give us the median value uh, essentially give us a median value in this particular run from the heavy channel. Okay, so by looking at this combined operation, uh, there are two issue or two observation here. Number one would be because we are actually combine multiple different type of operation and for each one we need to get access to the value inside the data frame. So as you can see, actually, we are repeating the name of data frame several times. And also, another thing is, when we, when, when we try to interpret the combined operation, we are actually going from inside all the way to outside. So it, it, it's actually not quite intuitive. So just to make sure that I make it clear. So for this operation, we first need to define the, the filtering criteria from very inner uh, part of, of the code. And then gradually move out to extract this value and then take a median. So by a reading or writing code, I mean from that perspective, it's not very clear. So sometimes it is error prone, I would say. Right, so for the, for the first issue, one, one way you can do is actually to, to, pass, to pass those operations with this width uh, function. That would actually, so would pass all the, uh, all, all the columns. So essentially try to, try to extract or retrieve the, the value, value from uh, this data frame. And the second issue is the, the, the next representation. So in, in the next lecture, when we talk about the tidyverse thing, I will talk about the pipe operator. That would essentially make your code more easy to read and write. All right, so now we know how to, we know how to calculate the median for one run. And so to generalize or expand uh, this operation for all runs, there's an approach that calls split apply combine. Uh, approach for group summary. So it's actually a quite common pattern when, when we try to extract those group summary. So that involves three steps. The first step we need to split the split the factor, in, in this case would be the, the log two intensity, into a subset based on the grouping information. In this case, the, the grouping information would be each mass spec run. And then within each sub, we think each subset, we apply some function. Here would be the median, we apply the median for the subset, and then we combine the results together. So it may sound simple, but ho however, ho how to perform this three step in a the, in the, uh, consistent or homogeneous way would, would actually make a di big difference uh, in terms of uh, how efficient and uh, how clean your code uh, ends up to be. So we'll talk about uh, three approach. The very first one will be uh, the by just use a for loop. So in in this part, so I'll first to get the unique wrong ID here, and then I will go through go through each each of the wrong ID, and for each of them, I will take a subset based on I will take a subset of the log two intensity for corresponding to each of the wrong ID. After that, I apply the, the median for the subset. 
and then combine. Essentially, I, I need to first to create create um, a, create a factor that I can use to restore the the result, and then for for each sub operation, I just uh, restore the the result to this factor. Now you can see we get a, a numerical fa uh, factor uh, restoring the the me the median of log intensity in each run. Another way to do that would be to use the t apply function. That actually gives us a much cleaner code and the representation. So here the syntax is we use t apply and then the first argument here would be the variable that we want to operate on. In this case would be the log to intensity uh, column. Followed by a group indicator vector that give us a uh, Essentially, that gives us uh, which grouping information associated with uh, the x vector here. And then define the function, which function we, we want to apply on each subset. So here, the, we, want to, we want to operate on this log uh, intensity column. And with a grouping information defined by run here, and for for each sub for each subset, we'll apply the me median. Uh, we'll, we'll apply the median uh, calculation. And you may notice we actually have one additional uh, option, pass on. Essentially, this one will this one will pass on to the uh, median function that remove re remove the. NA value so so that when we calculate the, the median, those NA values get ignored. Can you say what? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah so. Another point by using this is actually so we get a NAND factor. So for compare with the previous one, we actually just get a factor. I mean, with just numerical value, and this one we get a NAND factor. So that in, in the sense that in the subsequent analysis, it gives us a very clean or efficient way to extract the the median value for different runs that we'll touch on later on in the second task. And similarly, we can do aggregate uh, following the same syntax. Uh, the x will be the, the variable that we, we want to operate on uh, with the grouping information and fun function defined subsequently. OK, that will give, a, give us essentially the same result, however, in a, in a quite different format. By using t-apply, we get a NAND factor. And by using the aggregate, we get the uh, data frame. So for subsequent analysis, so not really, so de de depending on how you want to, how you want to stick with the data frame, or you, you somehow want to keep track of those NAND factor, that would make your workflow look a little bit different. And here for for later use, I will re rename the second column as a wrong medium. All right, so the T apply and aggregate are actually two, as an instance of two or four functional programming that Yang will tell you more about tomorrow. All right, so now we we are done with task one. We have all the meet. We have all the median of log intensity for every run. Now the next thing to do would be how how can we how can we use this information and get back to the original data set and use use the median log intensity to adjust the to adjust the original data set such that after the adjustment, all of them 
all the rounds should have a median of log intensity to this value as a global median. Again, we can use a for loop, looping through, loop, looping through each of the rung, and then for each of the rung, we'll extract, we'll extract the log intensity. And from there, using the, using the factor we just, we just compute, and use, using that information to adjust the log intensity, and then assign back to, to its original position here. And just to make sure we get it right, yes, so after the normalization, so each of them have the same uh, median of log intensity. And I'll get it back for the, for the approach too. Okay, so in, in the second approach, so we, we want to use a slightly more efficient and a more clean way to perform this. So we already mentioned this median vector, it's actually a NAN vector. So we can actually use the NAN as an index to extract the median value corresponding to different rounds. So for example, here I want to extract the median value for wrong one, two, three, and one. So I can simply put the the wrong ID here as a in indices to extract those value. So by recognize that, we can actually just use this very tidy or, or simple representation to extract the, the, the median of log intensity for a rung corresponding to each of the variable in, in this column. And following similar idea, we can perform the normalization. That gives us the same result, essentially to equalize the, equalize the median of intensity across rung. Okay, and we talk about we talk about to use to use aggregate to get the group summary where we have this data frame with two columns, one for wrong ID and the other for the the median in each row. So another way to perform the normalization would be if we can find a way, find a way to add one additional column in the original data frame, recording, recording the, the median of log intensity here, then everything we, we can actually apply everything simply ba based on those variables because the operation in R is essentially factorized. So I will use this merge function to merge the two data frame. Essentially, when you use this merge function, the function will try to find the, con find the key column with the same uh, column name. So between the, between the two, two data frame, we have one common column called run. So that will essentially, so for example, by calling the merge, you would add one more column here and for the for the first for the first value you map to the this very first one and the second one because it comes from the wrong two so you match to to the second value here so now we have one additional column here so once we reach to, to this point, then it, the remaining part for the normalization would flow naturally. So again, we for each 
log intensity, we minus the run level median and then plus add back the, the, the global median. So that gives us essentially the same result here. So any question until this point for the uh, global normalization? Right, so e essentially what we just cover is to compute each of the median value and then assign a global median to equalize those median values. And now, once we have our data normalized, then the next thing we want to talk about will be to get, a, to get one summary value at the protein level for each run based on, based on the feature intensity here we have. Okay, so for text three, I'll first to transform the normalized log intensity back to the original scale. And here again, we can do, we can use for loop. But remember here, the, the grouping information involves both protein and run. So when you want to apply a for loop, you've got to have two for loops, one for protein and one for run ID. So I'll skip that part. For the t-apply, now since we have two grouping variable, so we want to define them within the list here. So essentially, the, the first one, we define a grouping variable based on runs, and the second one based on protein, combining the list. And the log intensity from the light channel will be the one that we want to operate on with the function that we compute the summation of the intensity, and after that, we take a log two transformation. Okay, now notice in that, uh, so we have, we have run on a row and the protein in column. And for one di dimensional case where we have only one grouping, grouping variable, by using T apply that gives us a, a factor, a land factor. And here for two, di two dimensional case, it gives us the matrix. And in contrast, we, we can also use aggregate with very similar uh, syntax. Intensity and the uh, run and protein as grouping information and apply with the same function. So it gives us a data frame and with three columns, one for run, one for protein, and the very last one will be the, the summarized value. And as you, you will see quickly for, for the re, re, remaining test when we want to do the statistical modeling and also uh, the t-test, it, it may be easier to actually just pass the, the data frame because that's actually the primary for format those functions would take on. Okay, now I will just to rename the first column, code it as a log two intensity for this particular protein in this run. Okay, now we want to, in text four, we want to fit the linear model to characterize the, the summarized intensity. Now here, we have three columns, one for run, one for protein, and one for log two intensity. And we, we are actually lose, missing all those uh, information about the sample annotation. So now we need, remember in the very beginning, we create, create a data frame code design. So that, that would essentially essentially the, the sample annotation for each of the runs. So what we can do here is to merge this design uh, table back to the summarized value that we, we can know 
we can know actually uh, for each of the wrong, for example, where is is zygosity is M0 DZ. So I will first do that and okay, now we have all the annotations here. And let's take a look what's involved in in a linear regression modeling fit. So we use the LM um, to fit the linear regression model. And the first argument of LM is a formula in this way. Y uh, depends on x1 and x2. So here y x1 and x2 are actually all the column name and y is the response and x2 and x1 and x2 are the predictive variable. So essentially here for example we want to we want to know if the abundance of protein is associated with this zygosity variable we can actually write this formula local intensity uh, depends on the zygosity and then we need to pass on this data uh, argument okay now that's again to just work on just work with a one subset with one protein so just with this particular protein and I will fit the linear model another way to another way to fit the model uh, with a subset of the data set would be you can actually define the subset. So for example, here, the subset would be those with protein uh, with uh, those observations from this particular protein. So you, you can pass on this subset argument and you using the same, the original, the full data set in the data argument. And the class of the, the fitting result is the LM. It may not be quite informative, informative at this point. Now that, that, that thing, think about, okay, it actually gives us quite rich information from a, from a fitting of linear model. If we call the summary uh, function, okay, that tells us what the formula is used and also what's the data and some coefficient and some other uh, model statistics. How to extract uh, some of them that you, you may be interested. So they are some utility function uh, provided in R. So for example, if you want to extract the estimated variable, You can use this. You can call this a uh, coif function, and with the input object as your uh, linear regression fit. If I wrap it with some summary function, that give give you some additional detail about the standard error uh, p value and the p value here. And the fit function would essentially give you, essentially to retrieve those fit value uh, based on the, the linear model. Okay, the whole point here is just to tell you, okay, this, this, this procedure is quite complicated and based on different, uh, different information that you want to extract from, from, from the model object, you may need to, that may involve uh, different function and uh, different code and it, it's not very consistent and if you want to actually repeat this procedure for all the proteins so you, you actually need, need to write down uh, some terrible u utility function or you, you simply pull, pull it out into some uh, plain script and that's again not, not quite clean, not quite efficient and can induce some error that we will uh, try to address in, in the next section in Tidyverse. That will be just the index. The index from your original data set. Do a number, yeah. 
it's the same protein. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but one one protein and you 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 have so many rounds. You have two two thirty two rounds, right? So let me go back here. No, we we have all all the rounds get calculated, right? So we have two thirty two rounds, and yeah, right. So so the whole point here for the test flow is, is actually so. We want to. We wish to come up with a better way that, uh, for for data modeling, that can be. I, I mean, made, made the whole procedure somehow more consistent and tidy. Similarly, for for the final test, test five, uh, we do a t test, and again, we want to suppose we are interested in knowing whether the log two intensity. Um, is depend or governed by the log density here. So, again, we you using the similar uh, syntax. First, with the the formula, and followed by the data argument. And here, the the, the first example I'm showing here, I simply pass the the subset of the data to the data argument. And again, that's that's the output object look like. And just to mention, so we can also pass um, the the sub subset uh, option that define define the subset that we subset of this original uh, data frame that we want to pass on. That will give us essentially the same result. And if you are really interested in do you using some vector or matrix, you can also match uh, two sample here. One would be from one group uh, coming from uh, the intensity coming from this particular group, and another sample with intensity coming from this particular group. You can also do that. But just think about, OK, if now you have lots of protein and many different wrong different groups, then what you would do by this approach. So again, take a look at this model object. And there is a list uh, with some information uh, inside where we may be interested in knowing their p-value, you know, estimate, and summary statistic, for example. So you can actually get all of them from this model object. But again, if you want to somehow generalize uh, this procedure into a consistent workflow, then it may be quite painful. So in the following in the following section, so we'll try to we'll try to use the tool or the method in the tidyverse that hopefully can address some or mo most of those uh, limitations. Yeah, so that will be all for the case studies. So any question for this part?
So in my material, uh, so far I don't include that part in terms of the reading data, but I think if you are interested in this, this topic, that might be interesting, and maybe you can do this tomorrow morning in the other session to read your data at 8 o'clock. So your question is why why do I use this model or Yeah, so a common or very bad answer would be because that's a very good thing people will usually do. And actually the practice I just I just went through is, is actually somehow years ago by itself. Usually when, when when you want to do the modeling, there are a few more things you want to do. You want to first to plot, for example, here we are comparing the log intensity versus the stuff like that. So one way to do that is you somehow want to plot the log intensity versus the stuff like that first. And then to see if you can do a representation. And of course there is a linear model to give you a good idea to do the math and things like that. Yeah, that 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 part um, we don't cover in this topic. Um, actually, in, in the end, I did quite a few aggregates that when I this is this one. So in text three when we have true grouping information and we talk about we talk about two ways. So one would be to use key apply, that would give give you a matrix. Or using aggregate, that would give you a data frame. However, if you want to link those results in subsequent analysis, for for example here a linear modeling or the t test, I think at least from my point of view, the, the data frame would be somehow more suitable to use because you can easily pass on your, your, your data to the function. But aggregate itself, although it looks simple, but it's not quite efficient. And so in terms of performance, I, I think on day, day three, Kylie will tell you more about so how to assess or evaluate the performance of the, of the function. Okay, so let's now move on to the uh, first, so the plan the plan for, for the remaining uh, 14, 14 minutes, I'll first I will introduce the tidyverse. And so probably for today we may just touch on the tidy data to give you an idea what is a tidy data and why we need a tidy data. And tomorrow we are really talking about so Okay, so essentially the real benefit or advantage by having tidy data that we, we have lots of a rich set of tools that we can uh, wrangle the, the, the data in a very efficient and consistent way. Hmm? Um, okay. Um, so during the break, during the break, just to make sure, um, if you go to the, just to make sure you can get access to, to the material in in the next part. Where? That will be under the folder. Uh, or, or originally planned for tomorrow, the May 4th. 
9 o'clock under this water. All right, we'll take a five-minute break. <laughs>